the channel if this is your first time. Oh, probably not. <laughs> it might be. It might be just you've searched for some Alan Parsons project and this is what you've come across. You've stumbled across my channel. You've stumbled across this. This is iRobot. Alan Parsons project. We're listening to uh, uh, side two. We've done side one, so we now move on to side two. Um, what do we have on here? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We've got five more tracks. We've got The Voice, Nucleus, Day After Day, brackets, the show must go on, Total Eclipse, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 32. What is Genesis chapter 1, verse 32? I don't know. I'm not going to find out now. <laughs> right. Let's... Uh, Get this all ready to record. That's all going. Right. Here we go. That's something of a uh, psycho killer by the talking heads. Very, very Pink floyd -y sort of sound. That piano. With the echo and reverb on it. It's almost a feeling you can touch in the air. You look all around you, but nobody's there. It's been a long time now since you've been aware that someone is watching you. Sooner or later when your big chances come You'll look for the catches, but there'll be none Remember before you grab the money and run That someone is watching you Very, very cool use of sound. And I don't mean just the instruments, I just mean... Well, maybe I mean studio. Ooh. Let's turn that down a little bit.
does share some DNA, whether that's purposeful or not, with uh, Animals by Pink Floyd, that album. Just that piano sound with the echo and the stuff. It's just so, so um, reminiscent of that. Just having a quick look on Wikipedia to see if he was involved in that. a different um, different engineer who wasn't uh, wasn't Alan Parsons it's somebody called Brian Humphreys say Alan Partridge. I think I did deny him. Alan Parsons. Alan Partridge is someone very different. <laughs> we now move on to a thing called Nucleus. As if that could be lifted straight from this into now you know that vi- I did a video yesterday. Uh, you've probably seen it. The um, uh, ten most influential albums of my formative years, um, and on one of the one of the albums I listened to was called uh, "The Orbs Adventures Beyond the Ultra World." This could fit on that. This sounds very reminiscent of that. Okay. I think there's a piece of uh, 
drum recording on a tiny loop going round and round and round, which the musicians could hear. But then when it came to the mixing, it was faded right out and they just bought in and protected it. Oh, that's cool. Almost imagine this as a Pink Floyd song with David Gilmour singing this. I'm super impressed with this album. I really am. There's a, I can't what the number of the word is, there's a, um, there's a descriptive word to use for this sort of vocal, sort of like the, the way it slides down and... Oh, yes. Oh. Is it called a, a bomb or something like that? 
Or glis- no, is it Glissando? Is it Glissando? That might be it, actually. How do you conduct this? A oh, little bit more of the oh, please over there, and you, uh, ladies. Oh, come in, but yeah, perfect. Yes. Follow, follow the beat. <laughs> Is it? I think it's a. I think it's Prometheus film. I think it's got a soundtrack at the beginning, which is very similar to this. Might even be this. Two thousand and one, of course. sound. So someone was saying in the comments yesterday that this uh, reckoned a lot of people use this album as a way to test their stereos back in the day. I can well believe that. It is dynamically amazing. There's so much sound on it, and there is such a clean sound. I mean, this copy's obviously got sort of um, clicks and pops on it because it's ancient. But it's just, the recording itself is absolutely pristine. into the sunset. Fabulous. That's how it ends.
that fade out went on for a bit longer than I anticipated. <laughs> um, wow. Um, when I was a uh, uh, young, I don't know, if I was a, probably a young teenager, sort of 12 or 13 years old, um, I, for a long time actually, I lived in a very, very rural part of Suffolk, which is a county in uh, England. And we lived in a tiny village. And the nearest, um, the nearest point of uh, of metropolis was a slightly larger village, five miles down the road, which had three shops or four shops. And one of those shops was an electrical retailer. They sold light bulbs and uh, bits of wire and fuses and plugs and and all that sort of stuff. And they also had they sold a few records. I I, I remember buying some um, seven inch singles from there and some tapes. I know they had a like a spinning rack. I remember on some it'd been a Saturday morning, my dad would have gone into into this village, taken me with him, and gone to buy buy some new plugs and bits and bobs. And while he was sort of uh, talking to the shopkeeper and they're sort of rummaging around in the in the boxes trying to find the find the stuff, I was having a look on this tape rack, and I saw. I'll show you. I just I found this a minute. No, I don't know if that is going to focus. Focus, please focus. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, this is the best of Alan Parsons' project. Now, I remember this because I managed to persuade my dad to buy it for me. And it wasn't very expensive. It was sort of five quid. But, you know, five quid in 1982 was sort of a fair bit of money. Um, and uh, especially when I didn't have that much of my pocket money. But he bought it for me. And I remember listening to it. And it had... Um, Pyramids and Eye in the Sky and um, Psycho Babble, I think, on it. It uh, had sort of various different tracks on it. Uh, well, I don't know. This is sort of a convoluted way of saying that the um, the sound of this band is very nostalgic for me. It reminds me ever so much of my uh, my young teenage years. So this well, it wasn't important enough for it to have been to have made that list that I did yesterday for the uh, top ten albums, but. It would kind of be in there as so. Oh, yes, I just remembered this. I had, I'd completely forgotten about it until I suddenly re- popped into my mind as we were going through this um, this side today. And uh, I, the, the tape is long gone. I haven't seen that in forty years, <laughs> thirty-five years perhaps. Um, I don't know where that went, but uh, it, that was my introduction to the Alan Parsons project. And. Um, of course, I didn't know who he was, anything about him. I just thought it was, uh, it was a name for a band and some somebody called Alan Parsons. I don't know who he was. Um, until years later, obviously, and until actually really quite recently, probably the last 10 or 15 years, I realised who he was and how he was involved in the in the recording of all sorts of bands, like the Beatles and Pink Floyd and stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's that. Anyway... Um, this album is really, really cool. It's like a um, a show showcase, really, for Abbey Road, <laughs> and it's a demonstration of all that Abbey Road could do. I mean, can you imagine just having all that resource at your fingertips, having orchestras and choirs and arrangers and uh, equipment and resources and a huge live room and uh, lots of different sort of keyboards and pianos and stuff. And it's just, it must be like a sort of a kid in a in a sweet shop, wouldn't you? If you are uh, an engineer and able to do it, and kind of that's his day job. He was he was there all the time, and uh, it's just this is remarkable. This record, it sounds incredible because it is made by one of the best engineers in the business at one of the best possible places you could record with the best possible stuff you could ever record with um didn't have the songs of the beatles didn't have the songs of pink floyd but they're pretty bloody good pretty bloody good and uh, it's a great demonstration of of what can be achieved um wow <laughs> really enjoyed it really really enjoyed that right there we go i'll see you all in the next video whenever and whatever that is Until then, this is Jim, over and out.